Hi there, I'm Jamie Keat and welcome to Teachers Tech where I explore technology weekly and tonight I want to take a look at Google Calendar. More specifically, I want to show you 10 tips that you might not be using and these 10 little tips will make your life much easier when using Google Calendar. And remember, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button and like button and hit that notification bell so you get notified when my new videos come out. Let's take a look at these 10 great tips in Google Calendar. The first tip I want to give you is about quick ads to your Google Calendar. Now this one, if you're just on your google.com page, you can create an event right from there. Make sure you're logged in to your, uh, to your apps already. You can see up in the top right hand corner, I'm already logged in. But let's say if I need to make an event, a vet appointment for next week and I'll write uh, make an appointment for the vet next, I'll say Tuesday at 1 p.m. So I go ahead and hit enter and you have the option to create the event right from here. So if I go ahead and create the event, I'll just show you my calendar right now. Next Tuesday would be the 18th right here. And I'm just gonna go to create event and I'm gonna go back to it and you're gonna see it pop up right there. So I can click on it and get more specific if I wanted to change it. But right from here, I can hit edit event. So if there were some more details that came or you wanted to change anything, you could go through these options and save these too. So the other way to do a quick ad would be go to your uh, Google Calendar, get logged into your Google app here and just click the little down arrow right here. And then so I could say uh, supper at mom's, next, well, I'll say Wednesday, Wednesday, whoops, I better spell that right, at, we'll say 6 p.m. And you can see right away, supper at mom's right here, that, and I can go back and do the exact same thing. So those quick ads, I find a, uh, to be a handy little feature to quickly add something. Uh, you can always go back and edit them and make them more specific too. Do you want to schedule a place on your calendar where people can sign up to see you? Maybe you're in high demand. So this is how you do it. On Friday, you can see I have not much happening, but let's say I have uh, a bunch of people I want to meet with, but I want them to be able to pick their time to sign up. So I'm just going to pick uh, a time that I'm available at. So I'll put from, I'll just go from this. I'm just going to slide over a certain area here. So we'll just, I'll go 1030. Actually, I'll just drag 9.30 until 3. Now at this point, take a look at the appointment slots right up here. You can see I'll just put um, high demand meetings on this one. Uh, you can see from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, I can offer as a single appointment slot or I'm gonna put down 15 minutes and I will say create. So you can see a little bit difference. It has a high demand meeting, the my title, and it shows the 15 minute slots. I'm just gonna go back to this one and edit here. I'm gonna edit the details to show you a little bit more. Uh, so you can uh, change it. You can add your guests through here. Maybe there was a specific group of people you wanted to give the choice of where they wanted to sign up. But this is what, uh, if you sent out this link, what they give you right here, this is what they're gonna see um, as, their, as the public calendar. So this is the calendar that you could share out that they went be able to edit but you can see through here that these are all the different slots so if a person wanted this time this 15 minutes they would uh, sign up with this and put where description and hit save and then it would be put in there and they can also go back and edit this here so if you want to check out that more information on it just make sure you go to, uh, to just go back to edit it after you've created the appointment slots and you can kind of look through here and it gives you a bit more information would you like to get an email every morning showing your your whole agenda for the day. So this is already built into Google Calendar and it isn't on by default. So I'm going to show you how to turn this on. So I'm going to go up to the settings on my calendars right up here and I'm going to go to my settings right here. And now go over to calendars. And you can see, so I just have my one calendar, the Jamie Keat calendar. Edit your notifications, click on it. You can see what things are set on by default by looking at the check mark. But notice at the bottom here, daily agenda. Receive an email with your agenda every day at 5 a.m. in your custom, in your current time zone. So just go ahead and click that. And then any changes that you make in here, make sure you save them uh, after this. So you hit save. And then what's gonna happen when you get back to your calendars here every morning at 5 a.m., you're gonna get the all your events that are in a given day emailed to you. 
Google Calendar can be used more than just a calendar. It can be used as a good task list too. So over on the left-hand side here under my calendars, I'm just gonna look right here where it says reminders. Uh, if you don't have it turned on uh, to task, just simply click the little arrow beside it and you can see switch to task. When I click that, you can see on the right-hand side, task open here, opens here. So I'll just write a task here. So I'll say, uh, maybe I'll just write vet and I'm gonna just hit the little arrow beside it to open it up a little bit more. And I'm gonna put a, uh, I'll say next uh, Wednesday and I'll say take cat to vet. And I'm just gonna hit back to list here. Now, what I'm gonna do is just switch to my month since I'm on this week, I'll just switch to the month. And you can see it was just added right here. So if I click on it, you can see I can close it or delete it from here, or I could check it off. And notice when I check it off here, it will check it off over here. So if that's done. So take advantage of the task list. If, you, if you're like me, I like it connected to my calendar like this, and I find it just a handy feature uh, to be using to keep track of things. You want to add a few more options to your Google Calendar, check out the labs. So they're located just under your settings. So I'll click on there and you can see right under help, we have labs. And what we do with this one, so these are kind of forgotten experiments or things that aren't on by default. You can see everything uh, is disabled. So I'm just gonna click on, I'm gonna use background image and I'm gonna hit enable. When you turn any of these on, just make sure again, you hit the save or else it's not gonna show up. Now I'm gonna go back over to my, uh, to my settings again and towards the bottom, you can see calendar background. That wasn't there before I turned on the lab. So it's asking me to enter a uh, URL. I'm just gonna go to a image I already have open here. I'm just gonna go right click on it and I'm gonna copy the image address and go back to it and I'm just gonna paste it right here and I'm gonna hit preview so you can see that the picture is coming up and I'm gonna hit save and go back to my calendar and I have an image in the background. Uh, you can simply turn this off again if you want just by going uh, to labs and disabling it or taking, uh, taking off the picture. But whenever you make your changes, make sure you hit save after and then it will go back to the way you want it. Sharing a calendar can make things way easier if you wanna make sure everybody's getting the correct information. Now, let's say if I wanna share this calendar here, just go over to where you have my calendars, drop over down on the little arrow here and you can see there's share calendar. Now, if people are using a Gmail account, you'll be able to share it with them and give them certain features Do you want how you want them to see it. So I would just simply put their email address in here. So I'll just use a different account I have. And then what I'm gonna do is you can see I can say make changes and add managed sharing, make changes at events, see free uh, busy or see all the event details. So you can uh, give them customization to it if they have a Gmail account. So what do you do if you don't have, if the person doesn't have a Gmail account, how can you share your calendar with them? Well, just simply go over to calendar details here and I'm just gonna hit okay on this. And uh, what you're gonna do is right here where, where there's the calendar address, you can still share a uh, non-editable uh, a calendar with them. So for instance, if it was an iCal, I can click on this and you can see this is the link that I could share with them where they could take the information from. Or the other way is simply by HTML. So if I click on the HTML, if I go ahead and take this and copy paste and share this link, they would get to see this one right here so they can still keep track of all the events even if they don't have a Gmail account. Maybe you wanna keep track of coworkers or family members in a calendar. You don't have to be logged into the same calendar. If they have a Google account, you can just get them to ask them to uh, share access to that calendar. And simply, all you have to do is go over to other calendars. Uh, I'm gonna click the little down arrow to see, you can see the different calendars I have already. I have holidays in Canada and the weather. If I want it showing, I just have to select it, make sure uh, these are highlighted and they'll show up on my calendar if you want them off. You turn them off. If you want to add your family or coworkers, hit add a coworker calendar. Just simply type in the email of that person and they're going to get a notification in their email what the, what their what the email is asking and they'll either confirm it or, or not and then if they confirm it, you'll have their calendar under your other calendars. If you're looking uh, for uh, some other fun, just look for interesting calendars. Take a look at the, all the different holidays that you have available, the different sport teams you can follow uh, and more you have 
have, I'll just real quickly put in, I'll subscribe to the phases of the moon. So I'll hit subscribe and I'll go back to calendar and you can see now I have phases of the moon. So if you look over here, I can see the different phases of the moon through here. Whenever you wanna take this off, you can just simply, well, I can simply choose not to show it, but if I don't wanna to subscribe to something anymore, I'm just gonna go back to it and go to more and unsubscribe and then I won't be connected to that one anymore. Sometimes events don't have a specific time on them and you just wanna make an all day event. Uh, just simply at the top of this, you can click in one of these and I'll just put uh, birthday here and I'll hit create. And so if you click at the very top, you can see in this space, it just creates an all day event on this one. So you can see there's no time in, uh, specifically addressed in it. The other thing you can do, I'm just gonna click this and delete this, is just you could have it selected three at a time. So you can see now May 30th to June 1st, and I could uh, put just, I'll put example here. And I'll hit create and all three days are picked on this. You can do this with the month too. So if I'm selecting multiple days on this, uh, the same thing happens. It just selects it as an all day uh, event on these ones. If I go back, I'm just gonna go back to the week. You can go back and edit these uh, more specifically if you want to, but it's just a quick way to make uh, an all day events. This feature I really love. If you want to try to schedule an event to see uh, with somebody, but you want to find that right time where it actually fits in. So let's say on Wednesday, I'm looking at scheduling a meeting and I'm just using my other email account uh, that I have connected with this calendar. So let's say I'm just going to click on here and I'm going to go to edit event. Now I want to try to find a time to meet uh, with this person and this other person is me because I'm just going to add uh, a different account of mine here. To, and then what happens is I can see that calendar from that account. But just like I showed in the previous tip, I'd actually have to have that calendar shared with me. And in this case, I do have it shared with this account too. So what I notice right away is that there's a time right here in the day, if I scroll down, you can see a lot of times it doesn't uh, work, but right through here, there's an opening that I can schedule a time that works for both of us here. So I can go ahead and so I could add different guests in here to compare uh, these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, give my, uh, let's say, I'm just gonna say uh, breakfast meeting on this one. And I'm gonna, I have a time now that I know that works and I'm gonna hit save and invite external guests so that they make sure I'll send it over. And now I have a breakfast uh, meeting with this other person that will fit right into their schedule based on the schedule uh, from the, their calendar that they shared with me. I hope you like these tips tonight for Google Calendar. If you have, please share them with a few other people. Hit that like button. And remember, if you liked what you see, please subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you get notified when my videos come out. Thanks for watching tonight and I'll see you next time.